Hello there, thanks for watching. This video is for MYP design students and in particular students who are preparing their summative assessment for criterion B and they want to get a score of 8. So I'm going to talk you through how to get top marks for strand 4 in particular. In previous videos I've talked about how to get top marks in strand 1, 2 and 3 and you're more than welcome to check those out if you're a conscientious student or you're not quite sure about certain aspects of each of the strands. So, Let's get into it. Strand four. We'll start with uh, focusing on the assessment criteria. It talks here about developing accurate and detailed planning drawings and diagrams. Now I've highlighted accurate and detailed. If you want to get top marks, your drawings need to be accurate and they need to be detailed. Um, and notice it says drawings with an S and diagrams with an S. So you can't just produce one drawing here. It's plural. So you need several kind of drawings. Now, um, the next part of it, I've highlighted the word and in, in pink, because you not only need drawings, but you also need, uh, you need to outline requirements for the creation. So that's basically the words. You need to list, or oh, not list, you actually need to outline some of the requirements. Okay, so there's two distinct parts here, drawings and the outline of requirements. So I'll talk you through both of those parts. So. For the drawings, it talks here about creating and presenting a series of accurate drawings. Now, the concept here is you've just finished strand uh, three, and that's where you've presented your best idea and you've justified. This is my best idea. Of all the ideas from strand two, this is my best idea. Now we're at that part of the project where, okay, you've decided on your best, best uh, design idea. Now we need to dig a bit deeper. So let's recreate, let's draw some more aspects. Let's draw from different angles of this best, um, this best design idea. Um, so it's really focusing in and it, it, basically the student here is supposed to be, well you the student, you're supposed to be, you've decided on your best, con uh, your best idea. Now I need to really uh, explore and expand on the, and, and, and really present lots and lots of details for the audience or for whoever's reading my report here. Um, so there's many, many different ways you can do drawings and diagrams. It really depends on the actual product that you're creating, um, how you can do some drawings. But I'll just give you a little example, how you can make something detailed. Just say you're, you're going to build a letterbox and you've already drawn your letterbox. How do I do accurate and detailed? Well, focus on one particular aspect. For example, where the slot where the letters go into, you could draw that, just that particular part. Now, how wide should it be? Um, that's where you actually get some measurements. So now if you're recreating just that slot of the letterbox and you're adding some details about some measurements, do you want it to look like a rectangle or they're going to be kind of circular or rounded edges? How wide is the gap? What kind of uh, products are going to be posted in that letterbox? Is it only for letters or is it for packages as well? So here you get start going to getting into some great detail. You can also fo focus on the stand. You know, you've got your letterbox, but how is it going to be held? So draw a picture of the stand and how is it actually going to be attached to the ground? How is the stand going to be attached to the letterbox? You could turn the letterbox upside down and show the fixings. So maybe some screws or nuts or bolts or is it glue? So here again, you're starting to add some more and more details. But you also, the concept here is that you're thinking about it. So when, you, when you're thinking about your letterbox, it's like, now what am I going to, how am I going to put it together? Am I going to glue it? What kind of corners am I going to have? What color am I going to paint it? Am I going to paint the bottom? And so while you're doing these detailed and accurate drawings, that's why this strand four starts off the word of with develops. So this is you developing. So you can, so as you're developing your best concept, you're going to be drawing more and more details. Now, the second part of it is outline some requirements. Now, I'll give you a little secret. The easiest way to do this is, if you recall back in strand one, you created a list of design specifications. Just take that same list of design specifications and turn them into an outline of requirements. So if you've got some particular element, uh, a design specification, for example, if you're creating a, a costume for what, a stage production and you've said in the design specification, specification it must be for a male because you already know who the lead actor is and his measurements, his height is this, his, his chest measurements here, his neck measurements are here. So it must fit my, uh, the, the main actor. I'm making a costume to fit the main actor. So these are the measurements. 
Now, in your list of outliner requirements, you just revisit that. You say, okay, when I make the costume, it must be these measurements. It must fit the guy, the main actor, uh, his measurements are this. So it's just re, the easiest way to do this is just recreate and rewrite your design specifications like they're an outliner requirements. Now, another perspective to look at, look at this from is, now, again, this is one of the difficult things with the design uh, process is often you've got a lot of ideas in your head um, and that all makes sense to you but when somebody else looks at your work they don't really understand what's going on so imagine it this way for strand four imagine you've got a concept or an idea of a product that you want to be made but somebody else is actually going to make it so therefore you need to communicate to that third party exactly all the different things that you need that's why you need detailed drawings so when somebody else picks it up they look at all your drawings and they say, oh, okay, I see what they want there. Oh, okay, I see that angle. So then that, the, the third party actually makes sense of your best uh, design idea. And then not only that, then they lead the, read the requirements and go, oh, okay, this person needs this, 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 then this. So this actually happens a lot in the design field. The person who's creating the concept, they're not, they might not be the one who actually makes it. So they need to create some accurate and detailed planning drawings and a list of an outline of requirements for somebody else, for the for the production crew, or the for the or the people in the workshop or the warehouse to actually make it. So that's another. Once again, we've we've talked about this before, but it's very important that when somebody else reads this, they can kind of get a really clear picture of what you want. Okay, let me show you some examples. So let's focus first on accurate and detailed planning drawing. So here are some here are some concepts of a somebody is developing a new app. So here are some good drawings. A third party, anyone can look at that and go, okay, I understand where things are supposed to fit. I can see what goes at the bottom and things like that. So these are, this is very good drawings and diagrams. And again, there's not one, there's several, there's three drawings there. Okay, here's a concept for a kettle. So here's somebody who's drawn a few different versions of the kettle. So a third party can look at that and go, okay, I understand what kind of a kettle you want to be made. Here's another one. Here's a very detailed drawing of a watch design. So you can see different parts of it. Again, the drawings with an S. And here's another. This is a website. This is kind of a concept of a website de design. I think this might be the home page or the landing page. Um, and so if a third party looked at that and, that, and you're and they know that you're making a website, they'll look at that and go, yes, I understand completely what's supposed to be at the top. There's the menu items and here's some pictures and the YouTube video. So it's a very good detailed uh, diagram there. So here is another example of a student who's created an app and these are some detailed and accurate diagrams and drawings of just all the different screens and the way that the app will be presented to a, a, a user. And then I've got one more example here. Uh, so this student here is creating, uh, it's actually, the, I, I don't need, I don't even need to look at the details for it. I can see from a from a just a holistic view. First of all, there are diagrams, there are planning drawings. There's quite a, quite a series of them, and they're accurate and detailed as well. Um, so this is a good example of a, of a bunch of bunch of drawings that are presenting some details of what this student is going to be creating. Now the la next bit is some examples of the outline of requirements. Now this student here. They've taken the design specification and they've converted them into an outline uh, of requirements. And you can see they've got neatly presented to with the subheadings. So it's got the, the key element of the design specification and they've expanded upon it. And here's another example. This is a neatly, neat way to present it. It's as a table. In the left column is basically the design specifications. And in the right hand column, uh, that adds the detail, so they're outlining the requirements. So that is a really good way to present. Um, so you've got your bunch of drawings, and then you've got your uh, outline of requirements, which tap in just to the uh, design specifications. Now, just to finish with, I'll talk to you about the assessment criteria and the difference between them. So you're gonna get a score of one or two if you present some incomplete drawings. You're gonna get a score of three or four if you have planning drawings, or your list of requirements. So you've got drawings, if you just submit drawings, you can't get a score of more than four. If you just submit a list of requirements, you can't get a score of more than four. However, 
you'll get a score of five and six if you have accurate drawings and not all but and a list of requirements now a list is just quite quite simple simple list of requirements um, so for you to get a seven or eight you need an outline so convert the list to an outline so for top marks you need accurate drawings accurate and detailed planning drawings and an outline of requirements okay so if you were in my class basically I would be getting you looking at this last part of differ, differenti uh, the, 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 with the differentiation heading there I'd start to get you know, getting the students to draw get do some drawings once they've completed their drawings I'm going to ask them to do more and more so they have a quantity of drawings and their accurate drawings and they can focus in on specific details of each drawing so that, that yeah. so at the end of uh, maybe one lesson or two lessons they should have quite a few detailed and accurate drawings and then the next thing is first then you can start with a list of requirements which again is your design specifications and then convert that list to an outline and that's how you get top marks for strand four good luck and see you in the next video